Where's the world title? I was expecting it in the background. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, well. Oh yeah. Let me give you. Let me let me give you a little tour while she's in my house. No. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Let's right. do it. Boxing tour. cribs. Boxing cribs with Johnny Nelson. Boxing cribs. Boxing. Boxing. That's a clever style. Oh, where is Well, I'm well, I'm well. So that's when I won the title off Thompson. Oh, Carl Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. I put this post in my house because every picture tells a thousand stories. And I knew what he, I was thinking, and I know what he was thinking, because in that picture right there, he was clenching his fist and just didn't want to fucking. And I'm talking out the side <laughs> of my house, saying, You're puss, you all. I'm trying to wind him up, <laughs> make him angry. Uh, that's from the WBO. It was a certificate of, of achievement in regards to uh, what I did. I went out to Las Vegas to, to get that. It was basically because I made all those defenses in my world title. Uh, uh, this is a, a glove signed by Anthony Joshua and it's Lewis Dirty Wilder. And I don't know why they made me sign it, but I got it signed. I should have got, uh, there's only a uh, tie to Pures that's not, not on there. We have Jamaica there, homeland. Uh, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Uh, and again, that's a, a gift from the WBO uh, just to, to, to appreciate what I've done as uh, their cruiserweight champion, special recognition. Uh, that's the post of my last fight oh. uh, against Calgary out in Rome. And, and the reason why I put that one in the frame is because uh, it was the one fight I really, really enjoyed. And I don't know, I'm trying to explain that. I enjoyed everything about it. I felt completely confident. And it's funny because I, all the years I've boxed, why would that be the only fight that I really enjoyed? I enjoyed it because I look at it and I think, I'm really in it. <laughs> all right? But, <laughs> but people don't see that. That's just my opinion. I don't, I don't, I want, I don't want... Uh, uh, gratification one, but that's how it is. Right, so up there, uh, we have the WBO belt um, uh, next to it, the Lonsdale belt. So with the Lonsdale belt next to it, I won that twice in the space of 10 years and, and won it to the point where you, where you keep it. So I had two of those. And so the other one, I gave it to uh, to Prince Asim Hamid when we were all cool at the time uh, as a gift because I thought, this guy's got everything. And uh, I said, yeah, we'll this. So I gave him as a gift. So he has one of those in his house uh, as a gift. Um, and that is a European title, uh, which again, oh. another thing I won, uh, I won uh, 10 years apart. Um, and so I gave the, the original one to Brendan um, uh, because to me, again, I, uh, it was a tough time. It was a tough fight. A young... Barry Hearn came in there, came there with his dad. Uh, sorry, a young Eddie Hearn came there with his dad, uh, who was my promoter at the time. And uh, and Barry, cool guy. You think Eddie's good? Barry's a badass. Trust me, he's smart, sharp, on his point. And me, Barry Hearn, Brendan Ingle, uh, Jed, uh, Harold Graham, with my corner. And we had such a good time and, and Barry's running about, uh, Eddie's running about the place like some little bad schoolboy. So we should have known that the time this boy was going to be trouble. Um, uh, and so uh, that was a tough fight as well against Marcus Bart. So I gave that belt to Brendan, uh, the first belt. And then when I won it again, I kept the settled belt, second belt. There's this, this belts scattered all over Sheffield, I think, because, you know, one of these WBUs and WBO, uh, the WBF ones, in Australia and New Zealand and uh, and you can't really do much with the belts so what you do is I put them in in the museum in Sheffield donating them to schools um, we have a, a replica WBO belt down at Sky uh, the glove I won the world title in uh, gloves I won the world title in there at Sky as well just to put on display because there's no point in having it's like having wisdom and not sharing it uh, mm. having success like this and not sharing it's like having a Porsche and keeping it covered up in your garage you know, it's not you, you, it's not that you're showing off. You want people to see this. You want people to see uh, see what you got. Oh, there's one more here. Uh, and this is my friend, but I've got, got this picture. This picture here, uh, that's Rudy May. And uh, it, we, we and he, he and I were, were good friends when, um, well, when we first met. I met him as I was a sparring partner. It was my, on my years of being stuck out in Germany and nobody wanted to know me. Six years I was there back and forth. Rudy May came in as a, an apparent star of the future. And uh, I was sparring with him, Henry Mass, former World Light Heavyweight Champion. And 
former world heavyweight contender Axel Schultz and this young Rudy May came in and they thought, thought you the Rudy May had mad me up even though I was the sparring partner. Mm. Beat him up. Uh, but Rudy, uh, as he came in, uh, our friendship started from there and he was one of my main sparring partners for every fight coming through alongside John Buster Keaton. Uh, and the reason why is because Rudy was on point, he was sharp, he was very focused, very, he could be a friend outside the ring, uh, but inside the ring he was a complete bastard. And one thing I learned from being a spine point out in, Jamaica, in, in, in Germany was the fact that when I was out there with those guys, uh, the culture was treat your spine partners like shit, put them in shit mm. hotels, give them shit full conditions. So you, and, and to me, it didn't make sense because if you're having a spine partner, you want to get the best out of your sparring partner. So if he's happy, content, he's going to come over and give you his best. Good so work, why put yeah. him in a shit hotel and give him shit food, shit accommodation, shit living standards? Because he's just going to be mentally broken and just check, check catch a beating. That never happened to me because mm. my mind was never going to go there. But I saw it happen to a lot of, um, a lot of Americans that came at the same time. You used to get battered. And so I always thought to myself, when my time comes, when I get sparring partners over, I'm going to make sure they live large, put me in a lovely hotel, uh, take them out for meals, you know, introduce them to my family, make sure they feel comfortable and happy. And so then I get the best of them. So I'm, I'm kind of making a rub for my own back. Uh, and that's what I did. And Rudy, uh, it's, I suppose it's changing the times. Rudy now does that with his fighters. He makes sure when he brings sparring partners over for his fighters, they're taken care of, they're comfortable. So you get the best out to improve your fighter. Uh, because it's not about just winning that one day's battle. It's about winning the eventual war at the end, which is the main fight. And so it's, it's something that a lot of fighters need to learn from and need to get. I remember Klitschko did that with a lot of his fine partners mm. uh, in Austria. Uh, they put them in a lovely place and they were happy. And that's when he got the best out of them. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a little tool. I didn't show you the set over there. I'm trying to bust that, but yeah. I want to play you. <laughs> Reasons, the reason yeah. that we're here. I'm going to bust that on my saxophone. When, when the it. first show's announced, the saxophone needs to come out. No, nah, no, nah, I, I want to get that too locked down. I want to play, no mistakes, no, no, no. Oh, oh, wait, 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 do it again. Yeah. Wait, 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 do it again. I want to just drop that. Uh, but you know what? It, I, I, I've loved, I've loved the journey I've been on in regards to the boxing. I've been very fortunate. And I appreciate it. And when I see past boxing, I see boxing, I see boxing. Um, one thing Brendan always said to me was, you've seen every aspect of boxing. You've won, you've lost, you've drawn, you've been, you've been written off, you've been a champion. So nobody can tell you nothing. So it don't matter. All these jokes you can have about Nelson this time, it don't matter because I've done it. Um, finished so, on top. And that's, yeah, yeah, I've done finished on top. And I thought, and that, I put down to, I probably put that down to Lennox Lewis. Uh, because when Lance Lewis retired after he boxed the Tarly Klitschko and everybody was saying, come back and they offered him a world of money. He said, I'm done. And I thought, good on you. Where, whereas typically in the past, you'd look at fighters and fighters would box on too long and fighters would, uh, would end up punch drunk and broke and have nothing left for themselves. And we've seen that with modern day fighters. You see that with the likes of, I'm not saying they're in a brook, but you see like the likes of, of, of Roy Jones, uh, uh, um, Evander Holyfield, even Mike Tyson. I could think of many other fighters that I've done that box on too far. So people remember them for, for, the long, for the wrong memory. I think I retired at the right time. Um, mm. uh, and, uh, and I think Lennox Lewis really set, set the stall up. Hey, I've got one thing to show you before I go. Who's the... <laughs> Who's the mic? Wait on a minute. Is that you? Mark Morrison, man. Yeah? Okay. Mark, Mark Morrison. Morrison man. He came, he was at a club. I remember him getting arrested outside Pink Coconut <laughs> in Derby. It was funny. Because Mark's mad. And uh, and uh, we were outside the club of Mark. He, he, uh, uh, he, listen, that guy could cause trouble in that room. Unbelievable, uh, <laughs> unbelievable uh, performer. And I can remember the police catching him and slamming him down on, on the police car, putting cuffs on him around the back. And we were, why? Outside the club in Pink Coconut in, uh, in Derby. In Derby. And, uh, yeah, yeah, like, Pink Coconut, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was like, uh, Mark Morrison, return out the back. I'm going to boss that. After you go, I'm going to drop it on, actually. <laughs> hey, you got to put that up on Insta after, Instagram after. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? You're good thinking. I'm going to put it on. Return the mic. Uh, yeah, I forgot all about that. 
Mark Morrison returned another <laughs> mic. It's on there. I'm doing it now. now. I'm just, sit there. Wait on. Wait on. Okay, Johnny. Johnny. Oh, man. Old school. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have my own disco now you're gone. <laughs> oh, old school, old school. Johnny, thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure as always. And I'm sure we'll be back soon at the boxing events. Um, things are gonna go back to normal. They will, they will. Give me yeah. patience, have faith. Bless, take care. Johnny Nelson, pep talk. Subscribe. Thank you.